Hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for tuning in to Health Leaders, the place for peer sourced and solution focused insights for healthcare executives. My name is G Hatfield, and I'm the nursing editor for Health Leaders. Today, we are speaking with Paula McKinney, who is the Vice President of Patient Care Services and Chief Nursing Officer at Woodlawn Health, about her nursing journey and building resiliency. So, hi, Paula, how are you? I'm fine, G, and thank you very much. It's a great day today. Of course. Yeah, thanks for jumping on. Um, so let's get right into it. How did you begin your journey into nursing? Well, I think I'd have to go back to about the age of 12, G, when I saw my uh, uncle that I truly loved passing away in the hospital. He had been in a, a gas explosion and wow. was burnt very bad. And that was quite a sight for a 12-year-old. But I remember being in the room and watching the nurses in there, and they absolutely amazed amazed me with the love and attention and caring that they provided. And ever since that day, I just had a goal to become a nurse. Now, I wasn't brought up in a family that could afford to send me to college. So mm -hmm. I entered the military, went into the Air Force to try to go to college. That didn't work out very well because they sent me into a different career field. Mm -hmm. But when I did get out of the Air Force, I was able to go to school and then became a nurse. Very cool. That's that's quite a, um, you know, that's like an, a, quite a jump into the industry. Um, so who have been some of your biggest influences in the industry? Well, I think um, most nurses would say clear back learning about Florence Nightingale and everything she did to even mm -hmm. establish our profession. But I remember when I was in nursing school and I became an ASN first and then worked my way up, you know, to mm -hmm. my current degree. But I had a college professor named Connie Hauser, and she greatly influenced me because at the time, Connie was going back to school to get a master's degree. And I mm -hmm. was so enamored by her because she she's just a wonderful nurse and very caring. And she told our class that, you know, nurses could get a doctorate degree. And I just thought that was amazing that a nurse could actually get such a high level of a degree because here I was just working on an associate. And mm -hmm. so she was a great influence on me as far as advancing my knowledge and desire to learn. And then I had another influence in my career, um, a chief nurse um, named Darcy Berthay, and she inspired me to become a chief nursing officer. She actually spent five years during my career where I worked with her that she sent me to a phenomenal amount of leadership development and training. And so I attribute, I attribute my current position uh, and the, my past several roles to her because she was a very inspiring leader. Interesting. Yeah. So what was your best mistake and what did you learn from it? Well, let's see. I'd have to think back. Early in my career, I had a time where I was working in the emergency department and I won't give great details, but I had made a mistake with a patient and it really bothered me. And I was so upset that I could have, you know, did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the doctor and I explained to the doctor what I did. And he was very compassionate with me, and he assured me that my error would not hurt the patient at all, but he thanked me for telling him, and he told me that he appreciated that I demonstrated integrity. Mm -hmm. And so at a very young, um, early, really early on in my career, I learned that integrity was very important, and to always tell the truth, and to always put the patient first, and never be afraid to make mistakes. So I learned that very early on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great lesson to learn for sure. I, I think that um, that's a lesson everybody has to learn at some point, I think. Um, Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, so um, I know a little bit already, but um, you have a really, really incredible story of resiliency. So do you mind sharing with our audience um, a little bit about that? I sure will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that my resiliency, what I had told you about when I met you was I had been diagnosed with breast cancer. And then during my initial chemotherapy, which was really tough and, and very sickly, our CEO stepped down um, rather abruptly and the board appointed me to be the CEO of the hospital. And wow. here I was very sick and going through chemotherapy, not knowing what was going on, but they had enough faith and confidence in me that I had the experience and the knowledge to hold that hospital together until they could find a replacement because I did not want to be the CEO. I'm a nurse at, at heart, mm -hmm. and, and they knew that. You know, I told them, yes, I would temporarily do it and give them time to find somebody. Um, that wind up lasting about nine months. Mm -hmm. But anyway, during that time, while I'm getting my chemotherapy, I got so sick and dehydrated 
that I wind up having an ischemic stroke because I wasn't getting enough blood to my brain. And so all of that delayed my course of treatment um, because it delayed my breast surgery by about three months. It delayed getting radiation. And so I had to overcome and go through therapy and see a neurologist and all these things to take care of the stroke first and then get back on track about taking care of my cancer. But during all of that time, I kept working. I was the CEO. And then once they hired someone, I stepped back into the CNO role. And I realized that these employees of the hospital really appreciated my tenacity, my resiliency Mm -hmm. for doing all that despite my own personal hardships. And I was really blessed and amazed at how the people really helped me and took care of me during that time. Subsequently, I finished up, you know, I got my surgery. I had the radiation for six weeks. I went back on chemo for a year. And today I can tell you that I'm one year free of cancer. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's that's so much to overcome, truly. So how did overcoming those challenges make you a better nurse and leader? I think during that medical crisis, G, I learned to depend depend on other leaders. You know, I mm-hmm. needed to make sure that I delegate it thoroughly and that I depended on other people to help me get the job done. And in, in, in return, it helped them grow in their own leadership ability because I could not do all that on my own. I absolutely could not. And as mm-hmm. a nurse, I think that my empathy and my compassion really grew exponentially during all of that time. I was able to like, you know, share my story with patients, you know, because our hospital has a cancer center. And so every mm-hmm. time somebody would go up and ring the bell, I'd go up there and I and I meet those patients and talk to them. And here I am, you know, bald as can be, got my little beanie on my head. But mm-hmm. they really appreciated seeing that there was somebody actually who was a caregiver that understood what they were going through. And so that really helped me overcome many challenges was seeing other patients in my own hospital and then depending on my leaders as well to help me get through it. Absolutely. And so how do you think um, CNOs can help their nurses build resiliency? I think that that is a huge thing that a chief nurse needs to do. Mm -hmm. You need to build other nurse leaders up. And I think that nurses in particular, the CNOs, should not be afraid to fail or depend on others for help. So promoting a team dynamic can enable people to depend on each other, which then leads to supporting one another even through rough times. And then of course you got to celebrate each other, but Mm -hmm. CNOs can't be afraid to do that. You know, sometimes we, if you become a CNO, I think a lot of CNOs are like, we can be very controlling. We can be very, you know, independent workers, but Mm -hmm. I feel like in order to build resiliency in others, you have to depend on them and encourage them. And during my part of my own personal resiliency, that's one of the things I learned was depend on others, inspire them and grow them. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I heard um, from one nurse leader that I interviewed in the past that um, healthcare is a team sport, right? And I think that that very much extends to nursing um, and nurse leaders. I would um, agree with that. Yeah. So um, what are you most proud of? I think I'm most proud that, number one, here through all this three-year plight that I survived cancer, number mm-hmm. two, I survived being the CEO <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) And number three, very thankful that I'm back in my role of being the CNO. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't let all of this define me. You know, I mean, nursing has always been a vocation to me. I truly Mm -hmm. believe that. Um, And I never, ever wanted to give up and leave my profession. I know that in recent years, a lot of people have done that. I never in my 40 years ever felt like that. I knew all along this was it for me. But I'm most proud of the nurse that I have become over that 40-year tenure. Absolutely. And I'm curious, um, is there anything that you learned being the CEO of the hospital that you could you took back with you um, with being a CNO that maybe helped you be a better CNO? Yeah, I think the biggest thing I learned was not to be afraid because sometimes as humans, we become afraid of things that we think are out of our reach or too big for us. Mm -hmm. It's just a title to me. CEO was just a title. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was doing everything in that hospital anyway to manage the day-to-day operations, even before getting that title. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to take risks. I know when I was the CEO, I took many risks, you know, things that probably other CEOs, if they were a nurse, would not have done. But Mm -hmm. I did it at the time, probably because I was sick and I thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to take this chance. We'll see Mm -hmm. what happens. 
The other Absolutely. thing I learned was to live each day to the fullest and to find true value in my nursing work, no matter what it is, I just need to make sure that I'm doing the best thing for the patients. And I would tell other leaders, if you think about a decision you're making and you think about the patient, put the patient in the center of that decision. If the patient's going to have a good outcome, then it'll be a good decision. If the patient's going to have a bad outcome or it's not going to be good for patients, then maybe that's not the right decision to make. And so I learned that and I try to pass that on and inspire other leaders to do the same thing because leadership is incredibly hard, but it is so very much rewarding. Absolutely. And that is the perfect segue to my next question, which is, do you have any advice for CNOs or CNEs? Um, always put the patient first. Always remember that. You know, we, a lot of CN, I've heard a lot of CNOs say, I'm here for the staff. I never believed that. I always said I'm here for the patient. The mm -hmm. staff and I work together as a team to take care of patients and make sure that we do everything right. So I guess my big advice is don't ever forget that that's what we're here for. That's our true north, right? That's our mm -hmm. connect to the purpose is the patient. And if we just think about them all the time and everything we do, I really believe in my heart everything will be all right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Paula, for your time. I'm really grateful to have had this opportunity to hear your insights. And sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for sharing your story. Um, truly, you, you've been through so much, and, um, and I really appreciate you sharing. And thank you so much to our audience for listening. Yep. Gee, I really appreciate it. And I thank health leaders and thank you. And I really hope that this message of resiliency will inspire other nurse leaders to not be afraid and to always do the right thing. Never lose your integrity. Absolutely, I'm sure it will. Thank you so much, Paula. Thank you, G, and I'll speak to you soon.